All right, we're a couple of weeks removed now from the college baseball season, at least the end for the uh, the Flames here a couple of weeks ago. And the Major League Draft is in the rearview mirror as well, so let's catch up with the head coach, Scott Jackson, and get his thoughts on the 2018 season. Coach, uh, before we get into the, the draft and personnel, I just want to kind of – Look back at this season a little bit. 32 and 26, 15 straight years of 30 wins or more for the program. Third place finish in the Big South at 17 and 10, right around where you were picked, I guess. But uh, when you look at all the, the things that went into this year, losing five pitchers throughout the course of the season, you know, either before or during the season, mostly due to injury, your top hitter goes down in the first game of the Big South tournament. Is it fair in some ways to say that this team overachieved this year? Yeah, I mean, possibly. Um, you know, everybody has their adversity, and certainly we were not immune to that. Uh, you know, we had, you know, we had Jack go down, and and you know, before that, you know, Andrew McInvale in the summer. So those were two, you know, top flight arms that we lost. And you know, so you take a deep breath and you just kind of go to work with, you know, with what you have. Just a, a credit to our players, you know, because I think uh, we had some guys step up on the mound and fill some innings and do it with some quality innings. And and uh, Coach Gaines as well. I mean, did a, did a remarkable job with some young arms that I thought, uh, you know, had to make some progress for us during the year and they did and, and they had their their share of bumps in the road as we talked about before the season started but you know if you look at you know Noah Skiro, Zach Brockman, even Logan Barker in the conference tournament uh, they certainly improved and so yeah I think our team did some things maybe um, you know after we you know kind of took a deep breath and said okay we've got some some things to overcome here I think we did that and uh, just a credit to our players. And some uh, st statistics uh, also this year that you got to be proud of, setting a single-season walk record again. Uh, the on-base percentage was uh, right up there where you want it to be. Uh, offensively, did a lot of good things. Yeah, we did. You know, we had some guys, Trey Todd. It's not easy to come in if you haven't played a full season at this level uh, and perform and be able to do it, you know, and, and, and respond from any adversity, you know, slump, whatever you might, you know, might want to call it. But I can remember, you know, writing out that lineup to start the season and – you know, John Embry, uh, Trey Todd, Tyler Gallison, um, you know, Logan Matthew, even Dylan Allen. Uh, n not many of those guys had played a full season at this level. So for them to be able to kind of, you know, adjust and adapt and, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's just not easy to do it from start to finish. And I was proud of our guys. Our plate discipline is something that we want to be, you know, kind of a hallmark of our offense. And, and that showed, you know, I think, you know, 350 walks or whatever it was is um, always something to be proud of and a uh, testament to our players buying into what we want them to do. So I was proud of our offense and, and um, you know, a lot of runs scored this year. So hopefully we can carry that into next year. I think you told me at one point it was going to be D-Day when you had to put someone else in the starting lineup uh, at the leadoff spot other than DJ Artis. Well, D-Day's here. Yeah. And uh, DJ, seventh round pick of the Cubs. Uh, you're losing some guys to the draft. Uh, four guys drafted this year. Uh, three of them had eligibility left. And then also with uh, uh, the seniors that are going to be outgoing as well. Uh, how do you replace some of those guys? Well, you, you don't. You don't replace them in, in the clubhouse first. Uh, there, there's just some unbelievable kids that we've been fortunate to coach in this program that, that have represented Liberty and, and, and you know, just our mission um, just extremely well. And we'll miss those guys. I'll just miss seeing them every day, most of all. Talent, you know, the talent part of it um, obviously comes with that. And so, um, yeah, DJ is somebody that uh, it's, it's easy to, to expect big things from him. Um, he did it for three years here and left an incredible mark on our program. Uh, Trey Todd was here for one year, uh, did some unbelievable things in just one division, one season. Uh, Jackson Birch, just a tremendous, um, you know, response from Tommy John to fight his way back and work himself into a position to be drafted. And then, you know, Jack DeGroat, um, you know, he, he had some unbelievable, you know, appearances and in innings here, um, you know, his first two years. So we'll, we'll miss those guys along with, you know, Vinny Tarantola, I thought was just fantastic at the end of the year, saved, saved his best for last. Josh Barrick, uh, Andrew Yasek is just, you know, just some kids that uh, I'm fortunate to say we had a chance to coach. Well, uh, when you look at uh, what you what you've got coming back, uh, some solid pieces as well. Andrew McInville is he on schedule with uh, where he should be at this point? Yeah, he sure is. Uh, he was down in Peninsula. He's had one one outing under his belt. I haven't had a chance to check the box scores this morning. I know Noah pitched or was scheduled to pitch last night for for Baltimore. So yeah, McInville's back on track and uh, you know was up in the in the mid nineties his first outing. So that's good for us. Yeah, you got McInville. You got Skiro. You've got Garrett Price back. Garrett, he started some games this past 
last year, kind of did the similar thing that he did his freshman year. Uh, almost, I don't want to say broke down towards the end, but started to, to fight it a little bit there towards the, the latter part of the year. Is he a guy that's going to be best served in the bullpen going forward? Yeah, that's, you know, it, it really just depends maybe on, on the guys around him. Um, you know, Garrett can do some things. Man, he's got three pitches, and we've talked a lot about, you know, just his ability to throw strikes, field his position. Um, you know, may, he may be very well suited in that role. Um, you know, so we'll have to keep a look at that. I would, I would, I would prefer not to go starter, reliever, reliever, starter like we did, you know, the past two years and try to keep him a little bit locked in in that role. So, so we'll see where it goes and, and see what the other guys around him do and go from there. And then, of course, some uh, incomers as well, the guys that are, that are coming in, the new guys. Uh, David Erickson won. A little surprised that uh, you were able to get him through the draft, but a uh, right-hander with a uh, good live arm out of Delaware. Uh, how, how much can he help you right away? Well, we hope he can. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's going to be up to him to come in here and prove, you know, prove himself in the fall. But certainly the abilities here and, and there with him, I mean, he's got, you know, an unbelievable arm, um, just certainly great makeup, uh, just a competitive kid. Went to watch him pitch in the state championship uh, that he started and led his team to a state championship. So just some things that he brings to the table, along with all the other guys in the recruiting class. We're Excited to get them here. Our summer bridge program's right around the corner, and they'll be here soon. Well, we talked a little bit about the leadoff spot. Going back to the offensive side, uh, you lose Trey Todd, you lose DJ Artis, maybe a guy like a John Embry. Is that a guy that maybe you consider for that spot? I mean, I know the average was a little bit down for him, but 395 on base, he can run a little bit. Uh, seems like he could maybe do some things up there. Yeah, that's who I have in mind right yeah. now. I think he's, you know, I think he's a guy that can, you know, can do some things. His OPS is good. Um, you know, he's having a good summer. Hit a home run, I think, last night. So just some things in there that that he brings to the table that um, that I like a lot. And so obviously you want your your leadoff guy to get on base and be able to do some things. Um, he may be best served in the two hole, but we'll see how that shakes out as we get through the fall. All right, last thing here. Let's talk about the schedule and the Atlantic Sun move coming up yeah. here. Uh, certainly some things were up in the air. Don't know yet what the A-Sun schedule is going to look like, but uh, you've got some big opponents out there still for next year. What can you tell us at this point? Well, first, yeah, I think you have to start there. A conference move with some opponents that are just incredibly talented. Um, some storied um, tradition in their program with Stetson. You know, they're, they're in, they were in a Super Regional this year. JU had an unbelievable year. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast has some history. So does Kennesaw. So does Lipscomb. So it's an incredible challenge for us to transition to a new league um, that'll 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 present you know some some big challenge for us. So on top of that, we've got some you know some non-conference weekends that are that are going to challenge our team. Uh, we'll open up at South Carolina for three. Uh, they just finished you know in a Super Regional. So um, you know it's just uh, it's going to be it's going to be daunting if you if you look at it from start to finish but we'll take at we'll take it one game at a time we've got midweek games 10 ACC opponents um, five at home five on the road so a uh, big challenge for our players and and we'll look forward to getting in that league and, and competing with those teams and, and hopefully elevating um, you know our level of play to, to to be able to compete with them you have some of those home series yet in mind? Yeah, we've got Delaware here. We've got Maine here. We've got Hofstra here. Uh, we do take a, a three-game uh, road trip to South Florida as well. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll spend the second, third, uh, and fourth weekend here in Lynchburg and hopefully be able to uh, enjoy our time at home this year like we did last year. All right, Coach, appreciate the time. All right, thanks, Nick. That's the head coach, Scott Jackson. My name is Nick Pierce for the Liberty Flame Sports Network.